tragic Demons appear like magic Money long so elastic Foreign fabrics to fashion I'm hitching for money cash I had it Shit get drawn in my pockets like Titanic When I get on my beat it's Jurassic Little niggas don't want static Wait, 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 wait Become like tsunami and drown you with the drip Welcome everybody to the ballroom. Um, this is officially take number three with me and Nick. <laughs> We've tried three times now to get this thing to work. It looks like it's going to be all fine this time. Um, this is my guest, uh, Nick Hankel. He is the Pistons Twitter champion. That's how he there likes to be introduced there right there. Uh, but really, go follow him on Twitter if you don't already. He's a great follow. He provides, well, since the season's been like postponed, he hasn't been doing it as much, obviously, because no games. But he does a lot of post-game recaps. There's a bunch of fun videos, too, not just post-game recaps. There's a lot of fun, quick two-minute and 20-second videos. Uh, he's also the site expert at Piston Power. Go check that out. But, uh, yeah, Nick, how are you doing today? I'm good. I want to – two things really quick. So – there's people always ask, you know, can I come on the shows, blah, blah, blah. And my girlfriend was like, you should start charging people to do it. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be that guy. Instead, what I do is I make them introduce me as the Pistons Twitter champion. That's my that's my fee. The second thing, it's in, it's important that you said the site expert for Piston Powered because Ku, as you know, because I've said it a thousand times, but some people still won't know, you are the reason that I'm even there in the first place. So thank you, Ku. Um, I've, I think I've attributed a lot of my success with writing to both uh, you and Martin. Uh, so yeah, for anybody who's ever enjoyed my articles or hated them, uh, <laughs> blame Ku. It is it is Ku's fault. No, so, yeah. yeah, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> no, yeah, I, de I I asked Nick to come on. I was pissed and powered expert. As a lot of you guys know, to follow my channel, like I believe a year and a half ago, uh, I brought Nick on because I, he already had a gr big following. So I figured. Why not just ask him if he wants to come right? But everything after that, me simply asking him to come on, that's all I did. Everything after that was all Nick himself, his, all his hard work. So while I, while I appreciate the, the credit there for bringing you on, I'm sure if I didn't do it, someone else would eventually ask you to go on somewhere. So uh, it, I, I'd like to credit you for most of everything you've come up with. Well, thank you. Yes. So before on the other ones, we had a couple other things like we wanted, like a little fun bits, but... With the with the fact that this is our third take, we're just gonna yeah. get straight into it. Um, so Nick, the Pistons obviously hired Troy Weaver as the Pistons GM. Um, what do you feel about his signing? How do you feel about him as a GM? What's your general thoughts on all of that? It's really exciting to uh, watch the Pistons do something. You know, hire someone where you're kind of like, oh wow, like nice, like good job. That that actually makes me excited. It makes me be really excited about you know looking forward to the future and with with weaver obviously the biggest thing um see let me just say this too it's it feels a little bit disingenuous to be happy because like we've we've said the, the things that i'm about to say and i know the things that you're gonna say we've said it already you know but people people don't know that we've already had this yeah. exact conversation <laughs> whatever i'll keep going um you know with Dwayne casey and troy weaver there's like a huge emphasis on development and that's really encouraging to see. And the biggest thing I think with me is um, I wish a man of his expertise uh, with Troy Weaver in the draft and someone who has as much success as he has had. I almost wish that the Pistons had an additional pick somewhere in this upcoming draft, whether it was later in the first round or um, uh, somewhere in the second round, just so he could kind of flex his muscles a little bit. And actually, here's, a, here's an interesting question for you. He wasn't all being serious, but a Bucks fan asked me this yesterday. Luke Kennard uh, and our first round pick for, I'm sorry, no, it was Luke Kennard. Yeah, it was Luke Kennard and our first round pick for Dante DiVincenzo. No. And I was like, that's a, he was like, and then the Bucks get to draft Obi Toppin. And I was like, that's a terrible trade for Milwaukee. I was like, that's just dumb. You're an idiot. for. Th I don't think he was serious because he's a good guy. I don't think, I was thinking he was kidding, but I was like, that's dumb. Uh, with Troy Weaver, though, it's really exciting to uh, have someone in that position uh, who – it's not to say that Ed Stefanski doesn't know what he's doing, but someone who has a very clear history of success in the areas that Detroit needs it the most. Oh, my fault. My, I muted my mic in action. Uh, what's it called? But I really wanted to point out something you said just now with uh, Ed Stefanski. Um I think it's fair, honestly, to question Ed Stefanski and what he's uh, done. And that was probably, like I said this a little bit last time in our second take, but I'll say it again, obviously. But uh, <laughs> um, 
So the reason why, when they first rumored that they were going to look for a new GM, or officially a GM, um, I was a bit like, I questioned it a little bit because because of the power structure that would go on. Was it Tom Gores, then the GM, then Arn Tellum, now Estefanski, do you have too many people in the room? Because uh, that can be bad at, a lot of the times if you have too many people in the room with that kind of thing, especially if you don't have a, uh, a power structure that everyone like can agree with, and etc., also, I've been, uh, I think anybody who follows me on Twitter can see that I've been highly critical of what Ed Stefanski did this past season, especially with, uh, most importantly, the Andre Drummond trade. So, along with that, I think there's been a, quite a few things to question Ed Stefanski on, but as far as it goes with Troy Weaver, um, I think this was the, the best pick to go after. He was the big fish in the market, like I've, uh, I've said on Twitter. Um, also, it's obviously a big prop that he's African American because, it's, like I said, uh, the piston, the Detroit city is predominantly black in a sport that's predominantly black. And now we got an African-American head coach and African-American head, uh, GM, which is pretty cool in my opinion uh, to do. Um, but yeah, I think it's obvious. I think everybody would agree that Troy Weaver was the big fish to go after and that everyone pretty much, I don't think I've seen anybody um, say any anything bad about this hire. I think everybody's just been raving about it. So I think it's a great hire for the Pistons. They got who they wanted and... We'll see where it goes from here. His first, uh, he's already been pretty active. On like he went and got a uh, assistant GM. I forget where from the Bucks, right? Bucks. Yep. Yeah. So he's already been active with all that. He signed uh, Justin Patton already. So he's already been getting straight to work, which is cool to see. So we'll see how it goes this off season with his first free agency and first draft class. And anything else you want to input on Troy Weaver after that? No, hit the nail on the head. It's kind of one of those things where because there's so little to talk about with the Pistons, everything that can be said about him has kind of already been said, not even just between us, but like just in general. So, no, 100 percent agreed. No, yeah, I said the same thing on Twitter. Like when we got this assistant GM from the Bucks, I was like, no, I'm not going to tweet all about it and try to make a big deal out of it. Because if it was any other offseason, we would not be like freaking out about an assistant GM hire. Just right. Because the Pistons it, in, are. Instead. We're, we're shifting all of our focus to like, oh my gosh, Lamelo Ball spending a lot of time in yeah. Metro Detroit. Like that's the that's the main focus, and like I'm guilty of it too. But yeah, it, you're it's a good way to put it that if it was any other off season, we wouldn't be talking about it as much as we were. Or well, are. since since you just brought it up, I just want to say this. This has been always this is I've been one of the people talking about that Lamelo Ball stuff, and I just let me give like a little story real quick. This is why it's so like cool for me personally. Like it hits home. So. His, I believe it's his manager and his trainer is Jermaine Jackson Sr. I don't know if you've seen my tweets about it, but uh, so Jermaine Jackson Sr. He played for the, in, in the NBA. I believe he played for the Pistons as well. Um, he was the head coach at Detroit Mercy and then also coached Lamelo at uh, Spire. So that's where that tie comes from. He's from Michigan. He's from Detroit. And then his son Jermaine Jackson Jr. I've went against him in basketball since I was in fifth grade. He's been like the big like. The dude was a superstar since like I was in fifth grade. We went against him all the time in our little leagues. Uh, a quick story about him: in sixth grade, I was a part of a chip. It's called Chippewa Valley League, a little districts league. Uh, before you have to try out for your school's team, obviously in sixth grade. So playing that league, we went against him one of these games at his school, Dakota. Um, he played the first half, was doing things us sixth graders had never even thought of, like possibly trying to do. He was doing like behind the back passes. All this other stuff. Like, dominated us in the first half. He left at halftime, and then we came back and won. I asked, we were talking to the teammates after. He's like, oh, yeah, that he just went over to the overseas. He's playing over there now. So he came he came over, busted our ass in the first half, <laughs> left at halftime to go play overseas. So, yeah, I've known Jermaine. Uh, that's that, in, in that picture, when you see LaMelo at, like, the foot store, foot, uh, f- shoe store, wherever it is. Uh, I think it was Foot Locker, I think. It was uh, Loose Cannon. Loose yeah. Cannon brand in so, Thumbnail. The one you see in the picture with, that's Jermaine. And I've I've been against you I've been going against Jermaine since I was in sixth grade. He went to my rival high school, Dakota. Um, we had back and forth battles all he, I've just it's really cool for me because he's like friends with someone like I grew up going against and like seeing how yeah. great that dude is. Like you think Lamelo's like I thought Jermaine was amazing. So like seeing that kind of perspective, like damn, Jermaine is even on like Lamelo's level and he like dominated us. So like it, it's just a cool story for me. That's why I talk about it like because it's like it hits home. Because uh, literally, he, like I went against that family for a while, for, like yeah, ten years. So, Absolutely. So yeah, so we can get going to the next topic. Uh, the next topic we want to talk about is the Pistons' young core. So we both were on DSA over the past few weeks. Um, when I was on it, like I believe two weeks ago. Um, 
I had a major disagreement with like a lot of them. And same. Yeah, I got. Oh, okay. So actually, after I ask this, I'd like to hear. Okay, so in your answer, answer the young core part, but then also talk about what you got into the disagreement about because I got into a like a heated disagreement with them. Uh, not not like any like like any serious like anger with them, but this like disagreement over what we were talking about. But uh, so they asked me about the Pistons young core, and I, I said that the Pistons have one of the worst like young cores in the league. I think they have one of the worst like setups in the entire league, like in general. True. And they told me that they thought that was untrue. Um, I believe one of them. I believe it was JMO who told me that he believed. Um, Luke Kennard was on the same level as SGA, and I, and I said that's, I said no, basically. And uh, so basically, what I'm getting at is, Nick, what's your thoughts on like the Pistons' young core compared to the league in general, and also without even just taking into account the rest of the league, just just evaluating the prospects that we have right in, right now. So I'll, I'll I'll very quickly just address the what we disagreed with on. Pretty much everything. That's as simple <laughs> as I can keep it. Did we get? I got pissed. Like I was getting legitimately mad um, with 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 certain things. It was a great time, though. I think we were. I was probably on there for like two hours. It was great. Had a great time. I did get very mad at intermittently throughout the show. Uh, as far as our young core goes, yeah, like you can. We can have good players, and we can also have like the worst future in the league. Like both of those things can be true, and both of them are true. I think the fundamental, first of all, no one loves Luke more than I do, right? I think it's pretty well documented that I think very highly of Luke Kennard. To put him on in the same paradigm as Shea Gilgis Alexander is blasphemy. Um, but he is emerging as more than just a three-point shooter, and he needs to get better defensively. Um, he's emerging as a playmaker. He's drawing attention uh, even just away from the ball. And when you get to that point where teams are strategically scheming against you as an individual to keep the ball out of your hands, uh, you're not underrated anymore. I know a lot of people like to think that Luke is, but he's not. I think uh, there's a legitimate chance that if Luke was able to have the breakout season that we kind of envisioned he would have this year, um, this last year, like the, the Indiana game, the season opener, was a pretty good indication of where we thought Luke was going to be you know, throughout the season, a guy was more confident with his shot and with the ball in his hands. Is this, am I speaking to you so far? Is this making sense? All right. Great. Um, other than that though, here's the fundamental issue. We're grooming a lot of these guys. And although role players are incredibly important, the issue is that that's what they all kind of are right now. And, uh, you would like in an ideal world to have at least one of them, have this sort of future of like, okay, we can kind of give the keys a little bit to this guy. And that's, I think what you're hoping to draft this year is a guy you can give the key to your franchise at some point down the line. But right now it's just a bunch of guys who would be essential. Uh, have this, but I just worry a little bit like Bruce Brown's a good example of a good glue guy, right? Someone who you definitely need on like a, quote unquote championship level team. I think it was Aaron Ferguson made the great comparison in principle. He's like Tony Allen, right? A guy who's essential for your uh, defense, a guy who's like not really known as a scorer, but like he can, I guess like Bruce is getting better. Uh, Svi is like just a really solid three point shooter, a pretty okay defender, really underrated going to the rim. Like he can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. And then you look at Seku and it's like, Look, there are a hundred different things that went wrong in his rookie season. You can blame Dwayne Casey. You can also blame Seku. You know, getting into that's going to be a whole can of worms. Uh, I think maybe the idea is that Seku will one day be the player who's not considered a role player, and he's one of like the main focuses, uh, one of the primary scorers. So, like, am I happy with the players we have? Yeah. Do I think that we're in a good position? with them no and that's my answer no yeah i completely agree with what you're saying and just like uh just like nick said with him with luke Kennard, all you guys know and we're gonna get into that a little bit later with him and luke but you guys all know that nick's a huge uh luke guy everyone i think everybody knows that i'm a big bruce brown guy like i'm a big believer in bruce yeah and um like the thing is when we ask these questions and people like 
like, for example, what they said to me on DSA about them thinking so highly of these said players. It makes me look like a hater. And I'm not, a, I'm like, I'm not hating on our guys. Like, I love Bruce Brown. But, like, when you start asking these questions, you have, you're asking me to be realistic. Like, I'm not going to be, like, just blind because I'm a fan of the Pistons. Like, I'm also, like, a media guy. Like, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be realistic. I'm not going to, like, have a bias with it. So, like, Bruce... You, actually, you threw out Tony Allen. Now, I'm going to throw out my comparison. I don't know if you've seen it. You probably, you might have. But, like, so when I say this, he's not, I'm not saying he's going to be this guy. I'm not saying he's as talented yeah. as this guy. But I'm saying that he has yeah. a, a, a lot of similarities with this guy. And it's Russell Westbrook for me. I feel like yeah, he has. Yeah, I knew a, you were going to, yeah. I, he has a lot of the similarities with him for me. He has, he's already shown, like, one of his, what's his best asset on offense right now? Probably his passing, I would say. His. Yes. Uh, yeah, his Court playmaking vision, yeah. ability. Then he's also really good on defense. Was I guess Russ was earlier on in his year, was uh, his career, but like has slowly like faded to not even caring on defense. But um, that's the that James Harden effect, man. Yeah, no, yeah, I, that, probably, that probably has a lot to do with it. But it's just like he does a lot of the same things that Russ can do, just on a, a way less scale. Like he can rebound the ball really well. It's like I talked about the other day. Like, when we traded Andre, everybody was talking about who's going to help on the glass. Then Bruce went on to be the first piston guard to have, like, ten rebounds in five straight games. So, like, he can rebound pretty well for his, his position. He's a really good passer already for his position. He's improving at getting to the rim. Even He can't shoot very well, but even if he, even though he can't shoot really well, his first step and his athleticism allows him to get past guys to the rim. So, it's just, like, a lot of things like that. But my, oh, I'm rambling on a little bit. Basically, my point is that I love Bruce Brown, but he's not SGA. He's not like the Pelicans' little young core. Like, these guys are not like that. Like, we have to be honest with ourselves. Like, a lot of these guys are second-round picks. Fee, like, I, I've, I've noticed that Fee has, like, the larger fan. Like, after Christian Wood, Fee might be, like, fighting with Luke Kennard, apparently, with, like, a fan base in Detroit. <laughs> like, I've, I, did, I had no clue that, like, Fee was this loved and, like, this, like, overhyped. Like, like what you said, he's a really good three-point shooter. Like, once again, I don't want to be a hater. I'm not hating on him, but, like, he's a really good three-point shooter who can do a, a little bit of other things, but, yeah. like, that's what he is. He's a he's a good rotational piece now to be a three-point shooter. But, like, I apparently, like, there's people who think that he can be, like, a number one, like, he can be a number one, like, option of scoring. The, the, he, yeah, there's a, there's a large contingency of people who firmly believe that you could seamlessly swap Luke Kennard. Yes. And be... <laughs> bananas like yes. no that would not happen exactly. no that's, that's exactly what i'm talking about like i i had no clue that this is like something that like a lot of people think that like svi and luke are just these interchangeable pieces and that's just like not only is that hugely disrespectful to luke and like that's just <laughs> <laughs> that's just insanely disrespectful to luke it's just flat out wrong so like it's just i think overall what we're saying is the pistons young core is not it's not top tier in the NBA, so yeah. There's there's something on the horizon. I don't know if it's hope, <laughs> but like there's something undoubtedly that's there. Like the like hit the nail right on the head. The Sve Hive is like on par with I don't know who do like if you see like like NBA Twitter people whose profile pictures is like an NBA player. It's <laughs> yeah. usually like, it's usually like D'Lo. Like like D'Lo stands yeah. as a lot of those. Like SGA I guess has a lot. Like, you'd think that Svi is in there, 100%. Like, if you say anything bad about him versus if you say anything bad about Bruce, it's insane. And I think Bruce is, like, this guy who emerged as as close as you can get to, like, a jack-of-all-trades kind of guy for the Pistons, right? Like, he does everything pretty decently, except scoring, but he got better this year, right? Um, and then, as far as, like, being an on-ball defender, Detroit's best option right i think that just flat out goes without say so if it came down to it and you could only protect one player right if it's luke if it's v if it well i feel like you're gonna say seku so let's just put seku no, out of I, the equation i think you'd be surprised if you continue on okay let's just for still though like let's just take seku out of it you can keep bruce luke or Svi. which one are you keeping i'm keeping bruce i, I listen i hope luke doesn't watch this and Luke, if you are for some reason watching this, you know I love you. I would probably take Bruce too because I don't want to say that Luke is replaceable, but there are a lot of 
guys who can shoot three pointers and not play great defense in the NBA. And with a guy like Bruce, um, and especially under Dwayne Casey's reign, uh, defense is held in a super high regard. And you need a guy like Bruce. Um, any team would. And uh, yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of teams need a guy like Luke too, 100%. Uh, I kind of want to reel that back in because I don't. I, I hate being. I hate being mean to Luke. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm. I'm taking that back. Never mind. Just ne- you can keep going. Go, go. Say whatever you wanted to say next. No. Okay. So I'll continue on with what you were saying. I would take Bruce, and it's not a slight at Luke. Like Nick, it's not. Well, you said you take yours back, but I'm not taking mine back. I'm going <laughs> with Bruce, back. but it's not a slight at Luke. Like for example, like. I'm thinking about this as the Pistons. So, like, if Bruce and Luke, like, were both, like, 20 years old and I'm saying this, then I'd probably take Luke because Luke has he's, – he's, like – if he was this player at 20, then okay. But along with the injury issues, which, by the way, I've said that I think are overhyped. I don't, I don't think that his injury issues are, like, this big, like, problem. So – but just taking into account that and the fact that he has to get paid soon and he – I don't want to say he's already at his ceiling, but his ce- I think you can pretty clearly see what Luke's ceiling is. Like you can you can look at Luke and you can see like what he is going to plan out to be. Like that's what you want him to plan out to be. Bruce, in my opinion, I believe that like his if every there's all kinds of different ways you can go with Bruce's ceiling. In my opinion, like it can be low. He can if he hits this, he can do this. If he because he's a jack of all trades, if he gets any of these one things. Like at an elite level, he can go this way, he can go that way, he can go this way. It's like he can go, he has multiple different avenues. So that's why I picked Bruce. And once again, it's not slight at Luke. I'd like to keep both of them. I'm also one, I've also said that I don't think the Pistons should trade Luke. So, but yeah. I I'm also said that I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. But I would not do it. Uh, I like Luke and Bruce, but if I had to choose one, it's Bruce because I think he has like a more. My, I'll say this. My piece I wrote about Bruce at the end of the season talking about why I believe he was the story of the Pistons season, I think he's the most interesting prospect the Pistons have. That will, that's what I'll say. I think he's the most interesting one we got. And that's that's my opinion. I know people disagree with it, but in my opinion, I think Bruce is the most interesting one we have. That's a really interesting take, and I can't say anything because it's going to take me so long to think about that and whether or not I agree with it. And I don't want to talk out loud and walk myself through it because I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things that when we're done, I'm going to keep thinking about it. Tentatively, um, I don't disagree with you, and I will leave it at that. All right, fair enough. Uh, we can move on to – oh, actually, no, one thing you said I wanted to make sure I gave insight to. Uh, what's it called? Um, so you brought up Seku and the struggles that he had this year and the highs he had this year. I can confirm um, that – I won't say a lot of the issues, but I will say I will say I can confirm that he had struggles, and I don't think this should be news to people. But I haven't seen people really talk about it. But I can confirm him coming over to the United States, having to learn like proper, like real, like English, and learn how to live in America. He's 18 years old. He's having to like fit in the lock and all that stuff. I can confirm that like was a problem for him, like something he had to deal with. So like yeah. people talk about with like rookie barriers that every everyone hits a rookie wall. So we all expected that, but I can confirm that it wasn't just, oh, he's hitting his rookie wall like every other rookie does. You have to add that other stuff on top of that he was dealing with. Like that's a, yeah. I don't want it's like not an excuse like because obviously like you're an NBA player and eventually you're gonna have to get used to it. But like he's a rookie and he's 18, like he's a kid and he had to come over to America, a country he hasn't been to. He has to learn like without his family, without like a city that he doesn't know nothing about, like all this stuff. I was added on top of it, his life and gen- like. People don't understand like these guys have lives off the court that they have to handle and can like impact their, their play. So I can confirm that that was a struggle for him, and that was an added on barrier, not just the rookie wall, but that was also something that he was dealing with. So um, I just want to add that in there that while I'm not as high on Seku as I see a lot of Pistons guys are or Piston fans are, I will not be like unfair to him. Like that was I can confirm that that was very obviously something that he was dealing with and it affected him. Uh, after that, that two week stretch when he was just like obliterating teams, but uh, we can go on to the next thing. I just wanted to input that real quick. All right, so next we were going to talk about uh, obviously the Pistons draft this upcoming season is all right. This off season is probably one of the most important draft. Hopefully we don't fall. So let's 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 hope that doesn't happen. But if we don't fall, uh, this is going to be one of the most important drafts since like what would you say like Darko since like high. I don't think we've been higher. I don't think we've been as high since Darko. Maybe not as important because yeah. we have other drafts that we need to hit on. But we've never been as high 
as this since Darko. So I just wanted to ask real quick. A lot of people were talking about, I see people talking about Killian Hayes. I see people talking about um, Okongawu. I hope I said his name right. Uh, LaMelo. We're, we're, I don't know if you do, like you're a big draft guy. I've already said I'm not a huge draft guy. I've done a little bit more of this offseason. But based on everything you've possibly done, not even if it's like a lot of work or just a lot of reading on it, just base level, who's your favorite draft prospect? If you could just pick one that you'd like the Pistons to draft. Yeah, mine is like a um, – See, okay, so the reason that I pick the player that I pick is because um, I'm setting myself up for like – inevitable disappointment when the Pistons fall out of the fifth spot, right? When they don't get a top four, they go somewhere between like five through seven because let's, that's going to happen. Like, I hate to be that guy. It's going to happen. So my thing is Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State. Now, I have like a really big soft spot in my heart for guards that are over 6'5". If you're over 6'5 and you're a point guard, to me – you're going to be like the – you're the future of the NBA. I don't know what it is, but I love it. Um, and he's like a really good consolation prize at point guard if the Pistons do fall. And Killian could still be around. It's really going to depend on what teams pick where. I've said – I've been talking about this so much that I feel like if people hear me say it again, it's going to be really annoying. But um, Tyrese Halliburton, he has this like really unorthodox jump shot. But the release point, the apex of it, is so unbelievably high, and he's already like 6'7", that it's literally indefensible. The issue with him is that he's really tentative to actually shoot the ball. He's kind of like Theo Maladon a little bit in that way. It's a comparison that I made yesterday. See, that's the thing about my – I don't – let me ask – I'm going to go off topic just for like just a second. When you do this, when you do any of your videos, any of your – whatever it is, how much research do you do? Um, it depends, like, what type of video I'm doing. Um, I would say I do, unless, like, so, for example, like, my real hard-hitting ones, like, when I talked about Russell Westbrook having a great season this year video, I did a lot of research for that one. But, like, yeah. outside of that, yeah. I would say, like, most of it, a lot of my videos are, like, opinionated. So, like, I go in just trying to, like, talk, and then as I go, I'll look up the information I need. So, I wouldn't say a lot of information, but I'd say adequate enough. Gotcha. See, I don't do any of that. I hit record not knowing what I'm going to talk about, and then I just go for 15 minutes, and sometimes I talk myself into these really good points or comparisons, and sometimes I don't. I mean, well, it um, works for you, so <laughs> keep doing it. It works, right? It works. So, uh, back to the Halliburton thing. He's like a really pesky defender, kind of inconsistent. Uh, he needs to add like 20 more pounds, because he's like 190 pounds, and he's six foot seven, and it's like I don't want to say it's gross, but like, I don't know. You need to like put on more weight, dude. Um, if he does that, I think he'll be really good. He's got bounce. Like he can get to the rim. Uh, his core vision is really, really solid. It, th the issue with it is like how many players in this draft forget? Like, I know if you get into the teens and the thirties or, or whatever, like you're not drafting a franchise guy, even in the top five, like how many players do you really think are going to be a franchise's next key piece? Like this draft right now kind of sucks. And I think that's what sucks is, although I would really enjoy having Halliburton on the team, um, he does not strike me as a guy who in five years will definitively be like the point guard for the Pistons. I think you could look at Killian Hayes like that. I think in an ideal world, you could look at LaMelo like that. I don't think you could look at Cole Anthony like that. You know what I mean? Like even if you do Anthony Edwards or uh, I'm blanking on everybody, Denny, whose last name I still don't know how to pronounce, Obi Toppin, I can say with great certainty, will not be that guy for a team. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of a crapshoot. You know, we're going to get screwed somehow. I'm just waiting to see how it happens. And um, Tyrese Halliburton to me is a really decent consolation prize for the inevitable slide in the lottery. Okay, so that's fair. Uh, I've also, uh, I'm also trying to prepare myself for the inevitable Pistons get screwed over. So I'm, I'm also trying to brace myself for that. But I'm gonna, okay. Since you took that route, I'm gonna go a little bit more positive. Then since you took that route already, <laughs> I'll go a little bit more positive. Um, and I said this on DSA, and I've also said this on um, Joe uh, Joe Trucks podcast at hashtag Pistons. I've also, I think I've hinted at it on my channel, and I think it was the Troy Reaver video I made. But uh, 
I, I actually I want to see your facial reaction. So make I, okay. I want to see your facial reaction when I say this. Okay. I have been convinced. Now, like I said, I'm not a big draft guy. I, my draft, my the way I do my draft research is I follow a bunch of draft guys who do the research and they they're smart and then I listen to what they're saying. So that's that's okay. that's my research. So I follow a bunch of these draft guys. I've listened to what they've said. I've read about what they've said. I am now completely 100% convinced that LaMelo Ball is the number one prospect in this draft. I think he's the best player in this draft. That's fine. I've also been, I've also, un, I have, I, I have an understanding that a lot of GMs feel this way and a lot of people feel this way within the league. And I feel now so strongly on it now based on what <laughs> I, based on all of that, I feel so strongly about it that I was asked, would you trade Luke and a pick to move up just to get LaMelo? I 100% would. That's how strong I feel about LaMelo. So if the Pistons in any kind of world could get LaMelo ball, so let's say they get like the top pick and they, he just falls to him, I think he should, the fi- the ticker should take like, it should take like two seconds off the clock and we should just pick him. If a trade were to present itself for Luke, I'm telling you right now, I'm pulling the trigger on that trade. I'm getting LaMelo ball. That's how strongly I am now believing in LaMelo ball. Let me, let me paint you a picture. Oh God. <laughs> It's you, you have to make that deal with the Warriors. You think you think the I mean, Warriors are gonna get LaMelo? I'm just saying hypothetically, if it was like written in stone that the Warriors were eyeing LaMelo Ball, we have no reason to believe that they would. But if they were, and Luke Kennard has to go to the Warriors, like are you are you okay with that? Yeah. Boo Why? Wait, wait, why why not? Because I don't want to give them another weapon. It's not oh, that I don't well, want him to be happy, because I do and then it's like he'll win a championship and like really happy for him. But then he's going to go all big time and he won't be my friend anymore. If he's going to get traded, I need him to go to like the Cavs <laughs> or somewhere where yeah, it's like. We already sent one person to what is called Cleveland. Well, Let's not do it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, or like, I don't. Well, OK. I can't say that. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I, I, you you I, see, here was the thing is I don't have a problem with you saying LaMelo. I think. Like you said, that's a consensus thing. And no one, not many people are going to fight you on that. But two things. One, if the top prize of this year's draft is LaMelo Ball, I, okay. You know what I mean? Like, we were <laughs> spoiled last year. I'm not trying to compare him to Zion because Zion is a, like a generational talent. To comp- it should be like, oh, he's no, he's no Zion. Like, nobody is, right? But even if you look at years past, I don't know. I mean, we thought Markel Fultz was the prize of the 2017 draft. And it turned out to be, what, Jason Tatum, probably? Or maybe Donovan Mitchell, maybe Bam Adebayo. But, like, the players that we – like, Jason Tatum went, what, third? So do you kind of get what I'm saying? Like, if LaMelo Ball is really, like, the ultimate prize, is that not a good indication that, like, this class is just kind of like, eh? Um, I think – Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Um, my the other the second thing I was gonna say was, I was worried you were gonna say James Wiseman. Mm-mm. If you said Wiseman, I was we were not gonna this was not gonna get uploaded because I was gonna leave because I was gonna get really pissed. <laughs> no. Um, and I I every time I say this, I want to clarify, I it's not that I don't think James Wiseman is. And actually, I just really don't want him. I want a point guard, obviously, and Lamella Ball. Yeah, it, it, I, if if any, it, look, sorry, I'm kind of rambling a little bit here too. Uh-huh. This is the last thing I'll say. Um, here's what I'm learning: is a majority of the people who don't want Lamelo in Detroit are the people who don't watch basketball and use his dad as an excuse. Uh, and they're like, oh, well, I don't want to have to deal with his dad. It's going to be a circus. Yeah, you know what? It would be a circus, and that would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Awesome. It would be absolutely awesome to have something yes. to look forward to in Detroit because right now we have nothing. Yeah, but, we'd actually get like a nationally televised game. Like, yeah, it would be real. cool. Yeah, it would be fun. Yeah, exactly what you said. It'd be fun. But just to answer what you said earlier, I think it, it would depend on how you feel about LaMelo as a prospect. So my big... My big thing is, and I always believe this from a front office standpoint, no matter what anybody thinks about the draft, no matter how many scouts like on other teams think about the draft or does anybody think about the draft, if you as a front office found a guy and you think, nope, 
They may think this guy's not it, but we think this guy could be a star. This is the guy we believe. You go and get that guy no matter what. So my big thing, even if you miss, so like if you miss, obviously that goes not like on your track record and you have the right to be fired over it. But if you find that guy, you have to go after that guy and get him no matter what. Because that's, you have to, my thing is I want you to, to, I want you to play like on the courage of your conviction. Like if you believe that, go get that guy. Because if you, what happens is now he, someone else gets him and now you were too scared to pull the move because you thought you were worried about what people would think about the move you made. So my big, it's just, if the Pistons think that LaMelo is bigger than just, uh, well, if they don't think that this is just a crap shoot, that the draft is trash, and since LaMelo is the best prospect here, it's not really saying much, then obviously don't go up and get him, because then it doesn't make sense. But if, if they look at LaMelo and they're like, no, it doesn't matter what draft this guy is in, we think this guy can be the guy. You go and you get him however you have to go and get him. So that's just my belief on it. If they do think of it like the, what you're saying, that you know it's just a crap shoot draft, the draft's not that good this year, and LaMelo just so happens to be the top prospect, do not trade anything for him. If he falls to you, then you can pick him, but don't do anything in that draft. But if they feel how I feel about him, I think you 100% do whatever you have to do to get the guy that you believe in. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. I, this popped into my head. This is one of those things that if it was just me sitting here recording an episode of Shoot the J, I would have said this out loud and it would have either sounded really dumb. So as soon as I say this, it might sound really dumb. So stay with me for a no, second. Go ahead. Let's go into this assuming Christian Wood... Uh, wasn't about to be a free agent. Okay, let's say he's got like two years left on his deal. The Pistons land at five. The Warriors land at one. You do the pick and Christian Wood to Golden State for one overall. Does Golden State do that? Does Golden State do it? Yeah. I, I like think they might do that, and I would need somebody to thoroughly explain to me why they wouldn't. Do, well, do they have money to pay him? Well, he's got two years on his deal. So um, so that's why I said hypothetically if he wasn't a free agent. Oh, if he wasn't a free agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was not a free agent and he was under contract for two more years at the time of the trade, Christian Wood and fifth overall for first overall. I think they probably... They have to. I, th- I, would... I think they probably would because I think Christian Wood, if he plays... So I, I have, like, uh, questions about Christian Wood moving forward, but... Under this hypothetical, if he continues to be what he was last year and you just inject him into Golden State with that fifth overall pick, I think that was like a seamless fit for them. That's a, That would, like, I actually kind of wish that could happen just for the sake of watching awesome <laughs> basketball for, like, for Warriors fans. Like, not that they need more to be excited about. Also, it's probably not great that I'm saying that the Warriors should do this thing so that they can be good, given my track record and how people feel about me talking about the Warriors. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about right now. No, yeah, um, but... Yeah, I get it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I yeah, but so you think that that would happen? That's not a dumb thing. I think that it could happen. Yes, I think okay. I think they I'm, would. I think they would very much consider it. I'm not. It depends because I've because they might. I, I've heard like it's been rumored that they think highly, really highly of James Wiseman. So it's like, yeah, would they want it? it just I think they would consider it very much because Christian Wood. If you just implant, like if you take him from last year and just put him on that team, like that's a seamless fit. And imagine like. I, like I'm the biggest Steph Curry fan. Like I, I love Steph Curry. He makes literally everybody look like amazing. So like imagine Christian Wood from last year and just put him on the Warriors with how much attention Steph brings. Like I think the Warriors, Warriors would probably really consider that, depending on how they feel. Anybody else? If there's any Warriors I mean, I, fans watching this and you think we're stupid, let, just comment down below telling us please, we're idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Please, because I need to, like I said, I need to be thoroughly explained. I need to explain to me why this is a bad idea. Because at five, you can probably get Wiseman, too. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's such a guard-heavy draft that though they're going to fly off the board a lot more. Wiseman's kind of falling in mock drafts. It's, it's like, that would be a recipe for, well, disaster for the rest of the league. And then if you're Detroit, it's like, and, and what you said is really important. How they feel, how how our front office feels about, and I don't mean to keep going on draft stuff. We can move off oh, of this in just on. a second, but uh, how they view the players is vastly more important than how you and I view them, right? Like I think Nico Mannion's terrible, but if they see something in him, then so be it. Well, I'd be pretty pissed actually. I would jump ship and I wouldn't be a Pistons fan anymore. Um, but like I said this uh, like a week or two ago. Um, I said that nobody should ever listen to me ever for any reason. I'm not a draft guy. I'm just a guy with an internet connection. 
And that's literally it. Like there are people who know a lot more than I do about certain things. And I I am very curious to know. Well, actually, no, Ed, Ed Stefanski said that they think pretty highly of LaMelo. I don't remember what the exact quote was, but he was asked about it. I don't know if you remember that. Um, I have a, a distant memory of it. I don't remember like, much of it. Yeah, you remember that it was a thing that yes. happened, but you don't really remember what he said. All right, never mind then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so is there anything else draft-wise you, need, you want to talk about? Uh... I just want to triple down. Nico Mannion's going to play like three years in the league, and that's it. Okay. I just want to. I just want to get that out there. I well, I also I also would like to get out there that I share the same belief as Nick. They have the Pistons were to somehow draft James Wiseman. I'd probably lose. I'd probably like this window right here would probably be broken. <laughs> I'm wearing a Kings shirt right now. I would be a Kings fan. I would not root for the Pistons anymore. I'd be yeah. so out. If we traded Andre just to then go draft another center and like I you know. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, let's move on. Um, all right, so getting away from the Pistons in, ge- in general, we can talk about the bubble, uh, the NBA's return. Um, there's a lot of talk about it. Like, it's going to happen now. Like, it's almost assuredly going to happen now. They're actually in uh, Florida now. Like, the players are in the hotels. Like, it's going to happen now. But um, there's a lot of talk about whether it should happen uh, for obviously COVID reasons and then also... Uh, the social issues that have been going on in this country. Um, there's a lot of people going back and forth arguing with, about whether it should happen or not. So, Nick, just real quick, before we go even further with it, do you believe that it should be happening? Do you believe it's like a like a big distraction? Like, do you think it's okay that they're coming back? Are you b- heavily against it? Like, what's your feeling on it? Yeah, I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm not a doctor. Um, and I don't want to sound un- ill-informed. Um I get why it's essential for the league that this happens. Um, so from that standpoint, and just for the future of basketball and the NBA as a business, yeah, like it, it has to happen. Um, for the sake of the safety of the players, yeah, there's probably not really a safer place that they could be right now um, than in that bubble. So it'll be like, I worry that if they have a bubble in Chicago, that would be dumb. As somebody who lives here... Don't come. Don't, you know, I, it, it. See, this is why I didn't want to go too far into it because I just don't. I, you, know, I, you, know, you don't have it, to. It's, it's one of those to. things where I get it, right? It's going to happen. Should it happen? I don't think that it should. Just cancel it. But for financial reasons, it has to. I will leave it at that. Okay. So I've shared my belief on it a couple of times, but just to reinstate my overall point, uh, I've been I've been long saying that they should just cancel the season. I think not only like so like I, like you said, I'm not a doctor either, and I'm not claiming to like speak for all minorities as well. Like everybody dealing with the social issues, like like I'm mixed, but I'm not gonna speak for everybody. Like this is not what I'm like trying to do. So I let's like take that out of the way. My thing was, you know, now you're just you're rushing everything. Like everything's rushed. Uh, you don't have to squeeze all this in. Now the next season might be rushed. Now it's having to, so for just those reasons, I thought it should have been canceled. Now if you bring in all the other things. If the players felt like there was going to be a distraction with a lot of them, seemed like they did, that we wasn't really reported on early on, and then it started slowly more coming out that, no, not a lot of these players are exactly agreeing that they should do this. So, like, if the players didn't think they should do it, then cancel it again. Um, but, again, like you said, with the financial reasons, um, I understand why the NBA, I don't want to say has to do it, but, like, they feel like they have to do it. Um I, I like I saw someone tweet it, tweet this, and I think this is fair. You can be happy that the NBA is back, and you're gonna be able to watch basketball, while also saying this might not be the greatest idea. Yeah. Um, that's why I'll stay with it because, like you said, we're not doctors, and I don't know everything about COVID, like obviously. But based on what I've seen, and the thing is, you know, I don't want to get too deep into it, but like a lot of this has become political somehow. So like I'm, I like I'm hesitant, like to, like, believe everything I'm seeing. So it's, like, hard for me, like, to become, like, make my, like, make my stance because I don't even know, like, what I'm seeing is true half the time. But it's, like, my basic, my basic point is if the players feel like it's safe, they want to do it. The league feels like it's safe. And the doctors they have, like, cooperating with it feels like it's the safest option and they can do it without, like, major things happening, then go ahead and do it. But I would just ride on the side of caution and just 
not do it. It's not that big of a deal. It's basketball, but that's my uh, stance on it. But going so this avoiding all the the controversial stuff. Let's talk about the fact that it's back, uh, Nick. I know that you are a big Bucks guy, uh, along with the Pistons. You're a big Bucks guy. Do you believe that the Bucks should be the favorites heading into this, or do you think that there's another team that should be dethroning them? Because me personally, I believe that the Bucks are the favorites. Sealed and signed. She's not my lover like Billie Jean, but the kid is mine. The Milwaukee Bucks are going to go to the NBA Finals, and I don't want to say it's not going to be close, because if it's the Lakers, it'll be close. If it's anybody else, I don't know. Like, I don't like to do the whole... This team has the... Well, I say this hypocritically, because I literally did this last week. I We said before we started recording that lists are stupid. I hate lists, and they only serve to make people mad. So I'm not the, here's who has the best chance, here's who has the second best chance. Instead, what I'll do is the Bucks have the best chance, but also, like, the Rockets don't have the best chance, but if I had to pick a team who's just going to, like, capitalize off of this weird situation and, like, non really, not really home court advantage, but just, like, this, you know, this weird, unprecedented set of, circumstance, set of circumstances, I just feel like Houston is going to be really fun to watch. And... Russell Westbrook, like from what January on, was maybe one of the best iterations of himself that we've ever seen, ever. Period. After the Clint Capella trade, they go what, like seven and two, and then completely fall off, and they were absolutely terrible. Um, I, it'll be really interesting to see how they perform. Um, even Philadelphia, I think, is a really fun team to look at because if Ben Simmons is, if his back is healed. And he's, you know, returning for the Sixers, which I we've I believe he is. I don't think there's any doubt there. Um, that'll be really fun. It, it, Milwaukee's the best team in basketball. They're the best team on the planet. It's not close. Um, they have like th- there are Bucks fans, Milwaukee Bucks fans, who say that Chris Middleton is a quote unquote non All Star. Like Milwaukee Bucks fans actually say that that's a real thing and I'm like I, it's insane the fact that they hate him as much as they sorry if that hurts your ears I don't know <laughs> that was bad um their ability to defend virtually anybody except on the perimeter which they're admittedly not great all the time it's like whenever the Bucks that's that's what worries me and I think that's what's interesting to see if if somehow they end up playing Houston in the finals like Anytime the Bucks have lost this year, I'd say like half of their loss. Um, if memory serves, I think the Sixers hit 203 pointers that day. Um, it was a lot. I'm being facetious, but uh, it, it was insane. So obviously you have Giannis, you have the MVP. Uh, who will go back to back? He is going to win it again. Might win Defensive Player of the Year. You have Chris Middleton, who's like a top three sidekick in the league. Is that fair? Like, here's the thing, because people are going to be like, "What about Anthony Davis?" I don't view Anthony Davis as a sidekick to LeBron. I don't view Russell Westbrook as a sidekick to James Harden. I see those as like two alphas coexisting. You know I mean, what I mean? Well- Technically, I think you would be right based on the list that we got today because I think Chris Mullins is above both the guys you mentioned. So, I don't That's think you... true. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to get back on track, sorry. Uh, it's the Bucks. Uh, Mike Budenholzer is – I don't know if he'll win Coach of the Year this year, um, but it's the Bucks. Yeah, that's my answer. It's Milwaukee. It's not close. Yeah, so I agree. I think I don't th- I think it is close between the Bucks and the Clippers. Um, Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> I think I think the Clippers are the favorites out the West and the Bucks are the favorites out the East. Um I I somewhat agree actually okay. So I can't say I somewhat agree, I also somewhat disagree. So I guess like I'm I'm in the middle of what you said about the Rockets. Um so like you said, uh just to throw it throw this out for anybody watching for everyone watching this video, I did make a Wesley Westbrook video talking about how great he's played. Go check that out on my channel. I'll, I'll put that down below. It's really like one of the best videos I've made. I had a lot of fun doing it. But basically, Nick said it. Since I, I believe the, the exact date I po- I started at was December 16th. From December 16th moving forward, he was playing amazing basketball. I, I said in my video, I think that's the best. Rest, this is the best Russell Westbrook we've seen from that from that point on. Now, the 
the list today that had him ranked lower said, like, took into account the beginning of the season. So, like, I understand why people don't want – I understand why people, like, not worship it as much because he was so bad, like, the beginning of the season. So I understand that. It's just a stretch of games. But basically what I'm saying is this year Russell Westbrook was, like, putting career highs, two-point percentage, field goal percentage, efficiency field goal percentage, was taking, like – was shooting the highest percentage at the rim since, like, I believe his second year in the league. So, like, he was – like, the Rocket system really, like, he bought into it and it really helped him a lot this year. So, I could that, – that's part of the reason why I somewhat agree. But also, the whole non-big man thing, I think, is going to be extremely exposed in the playoffs. I understand everybody, like, is – everybody's on board with this, like, new era of, like, oh, we don't need big men. We, uh, we're shooting threes. We don't need, like, post players, blah, blah. But I think that, like, when they go against, like, Anthony Davis, he's going to, like, shit on them. He's going to, like, drop, like, 50 points on them. They have no one that can guard them. And, like, anybody like Anthony Davis, like Giannis, like, I don't think they have some. Like, Giannis is technically, like, he's six, like, what is he, 6'11"? I'm considering that a big six man. 11, yeah. I'm considering that a big man yeah. compared to the Houston Rockets since they, like, they're, I believe their center is, what, Ro- Robert Covington? He's 6'7", I think Robert it was. Robert Covington, yeah. Or, or P.J. Tucker, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, anybody like that, I think they're just going to destroy them because they have they don't have no one that can guard them. I I understand everybody's like, oh, well, they're going to shoot more threes and all that. But, like, I I think that the whole non-big man thing is going to get absolutely obliterated by, like, Anthony Davis. So, I don't think they I can think beat the they're... Lakers. Okay. All right, so I'm we're sure. going to talk about the Clippers. So, I think the Clippers that um, – I think the Clippers are the favorites out the West. I think that with Kawhi and PG healthy, I don't think there's anybody that can stop them. I think they're really deep. Um, obviously, I know a lot of people like the Lakers, but – I, I question the Lakers' depth outside of LeBron and Anthony Davis uh, severely. I question it. Um, actually, then a- Avery Bradley's not playing, is he? He's he's not even showing up. I th- I think he's not playing. And then yeah. Shamit's not playing for the Clippers, right? Oh yeah, I think so too. Well, well, even with that, I think the Clippers can survive Shamit more than the Lakers can survive yes. any kind of hit to their rotation. 100%. So, well, they got J.R. Smith, though. Don't forget about that. They did yeah, get J.R. Smith. Yeah, yeah, the Henny got himself. <laughs> I forgot all about that one. So, <laughs> so, but I, I, I'm going to pick the Clippers to come out the West. And honestly, if the Clippers and the Bucks went up against each other in the finals, depending on how I feel, and depending on how Giannis has performed thus, fo- thus far into that playoffs, I would probably pick the Clippers, unless Giannis is having like a, like doing what Kawhi did last year for the Bucks. But I think. <laughs> I think the Clippers should be should be the favorites out the West. I don't think anybody can beat them if they're at their A game. Now the thing is, like injury concerns with Kawhi and PG, with this much of a layoff, are they going to be okay? Uh, like with all that. But if we're talking about full health, I think the Clippers are the easy favorites in my opinion. And I think the only team in the West that can handle them would be the Lakers. And oh god, I forget this. I purposely had a hot take that I wanted to say right here. I forget what it was. But, okay, so I'll forget that. If it comes up later, I'll say it. But okay. <laughs> uh, I do think the Clippers are the favorites out the West. I, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, like, from a defensive perspective, when it comes down to stopping Giannis, which team is best equipped to do that, the Lakers or the Clippers? It's the Clippers. And I don't know if many people are going to debate you on that. Solely, like, if we're just talking about that, yeah, like, it's probably going to be – um, uh, Clippers Bucks. I think the Clippers Lakers series is going to be really interesting, assuming that we get it. Can you imagine the blowback that would happen if it's like game five of the return in the bubble in Orlando and Kawhi sits out for like load management? Could you imagine? I've already and seen he, people talking about it. Here's my thing it's like, A, come on. <laughs> like don't be that guy but b it's like i don't know man they did have four months off where like they only have limited you know mobility they can only do so much around the house or wherever they can go your body does need to sort of reacclimate to the circumstances because it's not like a regular hiatus or layoff or whatever where you're able to go to the gym and do you know everything as usual where you're a little bit but it's also like you are gonna yeah that would be really annoying and i'm kind of expecting that it's gonna happen honestly yeah i wouldn't be shocked if uh if that happened but i've already seen people start to talk about what they would say if it happened so you're not yeah. you're not wrong i've already seen it start to happen so is there anything else you want to talk about with the return or anything mm, no all right nope. so we can get straight into then 
There was something at the beginning of this that you that we said that we wanted to talk about at the end of this. I forget what it was. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, our uh, our favorite memories of oh, the yes. palace. Oh yes, one, yes, our favorite one memory. Yes. Okay, so we'll get into that after this one right here, which we're gonna talk. Just go out there. You know, I'll leave this to you because I'll say this: everybody sees in the background my Derek Rose jersey. Um, everybody sees. I think everybody knows I got to interview him before the season. I got to meet him at media day. I got to interview him. I got to see him in the locker room all the time. All these players. So you know, I bragged a lot about that, and I I, I hold that in high regard. If I sound like a a piece of garbage for always talking about it and and bragging about it, oh well, I don't care because I'm really happy about it, and it's something I'm really happy for. So I'm going to give I'm going to give Nick the floor here. I'm just going I'm going to back completely off, Nick. When you won the Pistons Twitter Championship, what happened afterwards? Tell everybody, give everybody the story of what ended up happening with you. Actually, even before. I was going to say it was before. Yeah, yeah it was even before. before the Twitter Championship. What, what what, have you been up to? Who's Who's been one of your close buddies out of nowhere? So, uh, Luke Kennard and I, best friends. Love that guy. Luke Kennard and I are absolutely best friends. Um, it's really surreal because I remember uh, three years ago, my girlfriend and I, when we were still living in Michigan, um, she was taking a nap next to me in bed, and I was watching the draft on my phone. And I remember I tweeted. Uh, so at the time, I was growing a mustache, and it was like my prized possession, right? And I said, if we don't draft Luke Kennard, I'm going to shave my mustache. Like, Luke was my guy. We did it. I'm running around the place. It's crazy. Luke was like my guy day one. I loved him. So it's it's probably like a year, a little, like a year and a half ago, one of his cousins follows me on Twitter. We're cool, like we don't talk, like but he like likes my tweets and stuff. We interact, whatever. We're fine. My birthday rolls around, and I tweeted something along the lines of like, "Oh my gosh, like Luke Kennard has a wish me happy birthday." But I didn't tag him. I wasn't trying to be that guy. I was just like, "Tisk tisk, come on, Luke." And then it, that same cousin replies to that tweet and is like, "Day's not over yet." And I was like, "Bro, what?" And then like two seconds later, Luke DM'd me happy birthday, and I was like, "So that was sweet, right? Cool, my favorite." Um, it was probably like, I don't know how long ago it was at this point, maybe like six or seven or eight months ago. One of his other cousins, uh, Hey man, uh, Luke Kennard's my cousin. And I'm like, that's cool, bro. Like, that's love. Good for you. Happy for you. We talk. He's a cool guy. I, awesome. I'm all about it. One day he DMs me and he's like, Hey, like Luke and I need another guy. We're going to play some war zone. And I was like, what like what are you talking about what do you mean and uh so i it was funny because i joined their party we were doing cross play right they were on xbox i was on, on playstation i couldn't hear him like they, they couldn't get his mic to work i thought i was being like catfished or something like seriously like i was like because his his cousin like i said like he was a really nice guy like we had talked i enjoyed him he was a cool dude but i was like why would you do this to me like this isn't very nice but no it was luke we we probably played like i don't know like a half dozen times or something like that and every time you know we're getting more and more familiar we're just kind of like building a relationship in my head we're like best friends in reality we're just like pretty cool you know um it's you know it, it's weird talking to him about stuff because sometimes i feel like he tells me things that i'm not supposed to know you know what i mean and it's like one of those things where it's like i'm not trying to hear this stuff and like if you hear something you can then use it later do you know what i mean do you get what i'm saying so when he tells me things i can't like uh use that information elsewhere and i never would i would never be that guy um but there are a lot of things that i've been told <laughs> that i'm not allowed to talk about which sucks anyways the pistons twitter uh championship comes around and he's helping me out with that and uh, I didn't realize how invested he was in it and that he, like, knew just random dudes on Pistons Twitter. Like, I brought up Eli, and he's like, yeah, oh, I know Eli, yeah. And I was like, bro, what? So that was really cool. Um, I was in the middle. It was like there was, like, 45 minutes left in the final four round against Duncan, right? And I'm down, like, Tobias Harris, Bobon, like, nail in the coffin. They've both just, like, it's over. And I send it to Luke, and I'm like, brother it's over and he goes hang on 
I'm working on something. And like 30 seconds later, Blake Griffin like jumped in and was like, vote for me. And what sucked was my girlfriend was on a conference call and uh, like in the apartment, like five feet away from me. So the tweet goes out and I like have to be quiet. So I'm like running around the apartment, like, like screaming, like doing the motion of screaming, but nothing's coming out. You know, and I like strained my neck. It sucked, dude. Um, yeah. So we're like really, really cool friends. His cousins are great. Like his whole family is awesome. They also sent me like a, um, I could probably find that it. it would take me a minute. They sent me like a Luke Kennard draft night Pistons hat. And it's like my prized possession. I love it so much. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been really cool. Luke is another guy who like I could ask him to come on my podcast and he probably would. I just haven't done it yet. Um, so just to, sorry, this is the last thing I'll say. I know this has been like five minutes of me just talking, but how you like sometimes feel bad being like, yeah, like me and like Derek Rose. Like, yeah, listen, man, admittedly, I feel a little bit bad about it, too. Like sometimes like sounding like I'm being that guy like, well, actually, Luke told me this thing. Like, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like, that's like the most interesting thing about me. So I'm going to tell people about that because they're probably going to be interested in it. Um, yeah. So like, especially with Derek Rose, I think people are going to be way more interested to hear about that. And that's not a slight against Luke. It's Derek freaking Rose. You know, actually, maybe you'll find this interesting too. This is like the first or second time that I played with him. And I was trying really hard not to fangirl and be like, oh my God, like it, it Luke and I, oh my gosh, I love you. Um, his cousin had to like go to the bathroom or something like that. So it was just me and Luke. Right. And I'm like, this is my chance to like ask him a question without feeling like an idiot. So I was like, Hey, when we signed Derek, did you like freak out? Like how everybody else did? And he's like, kind of, yeah. He's like that. Like it's Derek Rose, dude. Like, and like, he was like, like he was like, I could tell that he kind of felt, you know, the same way that we did where we're like, Oh my gosh, like Derek Rose is a piston. And, um, you know, sometimes he'll just offhandedly be like, yeah, like I was working out with Derek the other day and I'm like, you just call him by his first name. Like I have to be like, Mr. Rose, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, so it's really cool um, being friends with a guy who like is an NBA player, but like he's just a dude. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure you've kind of experienced that. Like I'm sure you've just realized that like Langston Galloway, he's just a guy. Bruce Brown, just a guy. And Luke is just like, a dude you know what i mean no I yeah no yeah really... it it for, well i i want to say i'm not that shocked that he knows some people on pistons twitter I honestly i wonder if he knows me because uh his mom the thing is the reason why i'm not surprised because when i was a side expert piston powered his mom followed us on piston powered then yeah. she followed me and she like she always would fall she would always like uh like and tweet at us uh, anytime we le- we like said anything about luke she'd always retweet it she yeah. always like comment about it. so it's not shocking me that he knows anything of, and he like knows stuff about Pistons Twitter because it seems like his family is like really nice people and they're like really yeah. intergrained in our community which is like really cool and one of the reasons why I don't want him traded because like that's that's like a cool thing to have with a player who's like intergrained with your community and yeah. all that stuff so it's really cool about that but um, yeah I uh, like his family like I can't emphasize like how nice his family. is they send me the hat and like there was a phone number attached inside and it was like call me when you get this and i was like what is this luke Kennard's phone number like what is this and it was like i call it and it's just like his uncle like luke's uncle and i just talked to him on the phone for like 10 minutes it's the nicest guy i've ever talked to in my life like it was just really cool and um i talked to him about like trade rumors and stuff like that and that's one of the things that i i can't really talk about because it's you know but um uh, I was honest with him and I was like, if you get traded, like I am disavowing this franchise and I absolutely hate them. And that's kind of the thing that sucks a little bit is, and I don't know if you've experienced this too, cause you have a better relationship with more players than I do. I am like, I have a really hard time. You even saw it earlier. Like I have a really hard time saying anything bad about Luke. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to writing anything, like, you know, should we trade him? Should we not? Like, I can't bring myself to do that. I think it was like one month after him and I kind of started to become friends. I came out with an article that was like, the Detroit Pistons should never trade Luke Kennard. 
And uh, although I, I, I actually do kind of believe that, some of it was also just like a, please don't make my friend go away <laughs> kind no, of yeah. a thing. So, no, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel that was an adjustment for me when I first started coming. Like, like, when I, like media day was my first time being a, a credential media member. That was the first like legit time. That's a media day. So at media day, I had these questions I wanted to ask everyone when they went to the podium, but I was so scared to ask anything. So, but then, like, I was like, no, dude, like, Derrick Rose is, like, your idol growing up. Like, I've looked up to him, like, my entire life. I'm out my game after him. Like, he's a big inspiration for me how much he, like, he doesn't give up. He continues to go. Like, he's a big inspiration for me in my life, like, growing up. No. So I'm like, he's here. Like, I don't got a fangirl, but, like, dude, this is an opportunity for you to talk with him and him. You have to do it. So I talked to I Rod actually helped me Rod Beard with the free press, I or the news Detroit News I think he's at so he's with the news yeah yeah so he uh, he went up to one of the agents I think it was Josh it was uh, his name's Josh he's with the PR he's a really nice guy amazing guy he's really cool so he goes up to Josh and is like hey my man's cool wants to see know if he can have an interview with uh, Derek real quick and he asked a couple questions. And he was like, yeah, we can get you a couple questions. As soon as that happened, I was like, oh, my God, this is about to happen, dude. This is crazy. This is for real about to happen. So when Derek came up to me, he's like, what's up, my man? Uh, I was like, what's up, Derek? And he's like, "He's like, okay, what's up? So now I started my recording. I was like, first, I just want to say that you've been, like, a big inspiration for me. I, it really means a lot for you to let me, like, interview you, blah, blah, He's like, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. So I asked him some questions. And then after he's done, he's like, all right, man, I'll see you. Gives me a handshake. You know, did he I do, mean, like, the, yeah, like, yeah, the dap? We did, yeah, yeah we, he dapped me up. And we were just like, I was like, okay, thanks. Have a great season, blah, blah. So right then and there, it was, like, my first month. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I just talked with Derrick Rose. Yeah. But then, like, as you say, as the season went on more and more, you start to see, like, these guys are just, like, dudes. Like, they're not... Like, I stopped fan... One of the things that, like, I've talked with, like, other people about, other beat writers about, and they talk about how you can't beat, you have to lose your fandom. I disagree with that. I think I can keep my fandom. But I do see what they're saying. Like, you start you start to lose... Like, it's not lose the fan experience, but it's, like, you start to understand, like, yeah, these, they're like, these are dudes. Like, these are not just, like, basketball players. Like, you start to understand that. So, like, the more I was in the, the, more I was in the locker room, it wasn't like me... Oh, like, the first few times I went to the locker room, I was terrified. I was like, oh, my God, this is Reddy Jackson. Oh, my God, Blake just walked by me. Oh, my God, Andre just blah, blah. But then like, I, I would like to attribute Reggie and Langston for really, like, helping me, like, mature and, like, understand, like, hey, these guys are just dudes. You're doing your job. They're doing their job. They're nice dudes. They're not, like, like stop trying to act like this is, like, a fangirl experience. Like, you're just doing your job. They're nice guys. You're Just be nice with them. They're, everyone's cool. I walked yeah. in the locker room wearing one of my Jordans, Langston's, like, Hey man, those drawers are nice, bro. I'm like, hey, I was like, I, I, I stopped for a second. I turned around, I looked, I looked down, I was like, you're talking to me. He's like, he's like, he's like, yeah, bro, those, those drawers are nice. Hey, Reggie, you see these drawers? And then Reggie turns around, he's like, yeah, man, actually, I got those when they first came out. I, I remember when I first got them, nice pair. I was like, thanks, bro. My, all my boys are like, oh, you know, they're not retros, blah, blah. He's like, nah, man, don't listen to them. Those are some nice ass shoes. I was like, thanks, man. So, like, after that, I really like got comfortable, and they were all just like you really like they really just show themselves to be like really cool dudes. Especially like Langston, like you said, Langston's like an amazing dude. I talk with him a lot. Um, the crazy thing is, one thing that like ta- listening to you talk, I wanted to say this. Like I said it in my head, and I was like, dude, I have to introduce myself to these guys next year. Like I didn't say my name to any of these guys. Like I just, I just walked <laughs> out. I'm like, what's up, Langston? How you doing? He's like, what's up? And I'm like, I, do you got a minute? He's like, yeah, man, what's up? I talked to him. Like, I didn't introduce myself to any of the guys. Like, I watched James do it, too. Like, when Brandon Knight came in, he walked in and was like, hey, what's up, Brandon? I'm James Edwards for this. Like, well, like you'll see me a lot here. He's like, oh, what's up, man? How you doing? And then I was like, man, I should probably, like, <laughs> I should probably, like, walk up to Langston and Luke and all of them and be like, hey, I'm cool with WJR, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but yeah, But yeah. I never did yeah. that. But, yeah, basically what I'm saying, I rambled on for a minute. Yeah. You do start to realize, like, yeah, these are guys that are just, like, cool dudes. Just act... Like, you don't got to act different with them. They're just as another guy who's really good at basketball. And, like, is what it is. A lot of them are really cool. Especially Luke. I didn't get to talk with Luke a lot. So he probably doesn't know who I am. But I didn't get to talk with Luke, actually, I think, at all. But I got to see his interactions and the way he acts with people. He's a really good dude. Really nice. He, he would sit down. Him and James are super cool. I think everyone should know that from the picture that got uploaded of them at the march. They're really yeah. nice. Nice guys. He sit down, talk with people, just chill, laugh. Like, he's a really cool dude. A lot of the guys in the Pittsburgh locker room are just really nice dudes. And you start to realize, once you get to be around it more and and start to do it more, you start to realize, yeah, these are guys, just regular dudes. No need to, like, act different. It's just real cool dudes. Yeah. It's uh, it's important that you just said 
like that James and Luke are good friends. This is the last thing I'll say on the on the me and Luke being friends thing. Uh, I ha- when I had James on my show like a week and a half ago, like the second question I asked him was, "Who's better friends with Luke Kennard, me or you?" And he said that I was, which is true. Uh, no one is better friends with him than me, and it will always be that way uh, forever. No, yeah. So actually, I'll say this: since you brought James up, James, if you're watching this, me and James are pretty, pretty, like we're pretty cool friends. Uh, I always mess with James. Me, I, I really, I said this to James and, and Rod and Vince, a lot of dumb threes particularly, like they really helped me with this transition and everything. So I will always credit them. But but James and I are pretty cool, and I always mess with him. So he made my life like a lot easier because we'd always mess around and stuff in like the locker room and like in the press. So I will say this, uh, James. If you're watching this, I don't believe you because you'd be like on a lot of BS a lot. So like you'd be BSing a lot of times. So like <laughs> everything, I, I don't know what he said to you but when he came on my show. He came, he came on my show too. So like everything, I, I'm messing with him obviously, but like he'd be BSing. So I wouldn't take everything he says for like every like hard hard cold truth. I'm just messing with you, James. But you do be BSing honestly. I'm not gonna lie. But uh, we can continue to like. <laughs> <laughs> We can continue to, like, our favorite palace memories because, as everybody knows, the palace was obliterated today. Yeah. Um, it's sad. It was, it was, it's honestly sad for, like, the kid and me and everything because, like, the palace, like, a, like, it was, like, this big, like, shining, like, I don't know what, how to explain. Like, it was a big deal, like, growing up for me. Like, the palace of Auburn Hills. Everybody knows the palace. It's just, Chauncey's there. Yeah. Rip's there. We, is like, it, like, that's the big thing. So, like. Obviously, Rip and Chauncey and all of them have been gone for a long time now, and the Pistons have been playing LCA for what now? Four years, I think now. Um, uh, three years. Three years. So it's no. been a little bit since like the Palace held any like real relevance to anybody, but still, it's sad to see it like get obliterated like it yeah. was. So, but Nick, go ahead. What's your favorite? Let's actually, I won't say favorite because you probably have like a bunch of ones that you you probably won't think of. So just give me one memory that you want to talk about the most. Yeah. Whenever I, the, the one that comes to mind. Uh, so my dad spends a lot of time uh, working in Ohio. He works in Cleveland a lot. So he's kind of become like a Cavs fan a little bit. And he has been for a considerably long time. So uh, this was the 2015, 2016 season. So it's you know it's LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love. You know it's, it's it's the team that would eventually come back from three one. It's that Cavs team. My Christmas present to him was I pulled together like every dime that I had to get him. Uh, we were like three rows off the floor, uh, Pistons Cavs tickets, and it was I mean it was insane at the obviously at the Palace. And um, my favorite thing that happened in that game was LeBron has the ball on a breakaway it's just him and everybody in the arena is like starting to stand up because it's like even though it's the wrong team like it's still lebron like we're about to witness he's gonna do like you know his tomahawk like he's gonna do something cool he missed the dunk I, I think was like more entertaining than if he made it. You know what I mean? Um, and obviously the Pistons lost the game and I didn't care. I saw LeBron miss a dunk. And uh, I, yeah, I also, I saw the, I saw like the, the KD Warriors there too, which was really cool. But I think the LeBron miss dunk, that's probably my favorite. Now, yeah, I, I actually remember that game when he missed that dunk. Uh, I wasn't there, but I do remember what you're talking about. So that's pretty cool. Um, my favorite memory that instantly pops into my head about the palace. Um, I'm not going to say like a memory of me watching it on TV. That would be stupid. So, That's dumb. Yeah, that would be very stupid. <laughs> stupid. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, obviously I'm going to tell you one that I actually interacted with. So I remember being like a, a young kid. I was a big Pistons fan, obviously. And my aunt, it was my birthday. And my aunt was like driving me around places. She drove me to GameStop. I got like, I think, a. A game, a new GameCube game. I was big into GameCube, and she like she was recording me while she was driving. I'm like, what the hell? Why is she like recording me while she's driving? She's like, cause and then also I noticed that we like weren't heading home. I was like, what? This is not like the way home. Where are we going? She records me and she's like, oh, we're going to see the Pistons play. And like, there's a picture like on my Facebook, 
like I still have it on there. It's like me like shocked like like admit like <laughs> like re- like live reaction of me going to the palace yeah. for the first time. And That's the craziest awesome. thing is that the the first palace game I ever went to, it was Chauncey's first return to the palace. So I got to see him in Denver coming back to the palace when he when he was his name was announced, everybody was screaming, applauding him. He made sure to like wave and gave like the, his yeah. his love to Detroit and everything. And I, I always remember, like, at the end of that game, we were up by, like, one. And, like, the Pistons were trash. Like, the Pistons were not good after they got rid of him. So, like, we were up by one, and Melo had, like, I think two shots to win the game. Like, he went to the – I remember him dribbling up to the free throw line, pulling up, shooting, missing, get the offensive rebound, just threw it up, missed it, and we won by one point, I think it was. And everyone was going crazy. Chauncey's return, we won. So, like, that's my big memory of the Pistons uh, or the Palace. So – yeah, it's pretty sad that uh, it's gone, but here's what it is. Not all good things can last, and honestly, I hope people show some show the same type of love to LCA that they did at Palace because the Pistons, obviously, while they're not that great and not what the going-to-work Pistons were, um, what they got going on in Detroit with all their sports teams and trying to bring Detroit back, I hope people like... Like, I saw James James tweeted, actually, today. Um, he just said, full out, people are scared to go to Detroit. That's just That's why people aren't, like... You don't see as many people there, which I'm sure some of it has to do. So I hope like people start to like, I don't know, like stop being afraid of Detroit and like stop being like uh, scumbags about it and just like support the city and everything they got going on down there and their attempt to come back and like bring the city back and everything. Like it's a really nice site with all like the stadiums around. I've walked around it yeah. a couple of times with like the Tigers and the Lions and and the casino down the street and then. And then my college that I went to, Wayne State, being like down the down the highway too. Like if you look yeah. down the highway, you can see it. Like it's literally whole, right there. Yeah. Yeah. The whole the whole setup is really nice. So I hope people like start to show the same type of love to LCA and start to support the city of Detroit because they are the Detroit Pistons. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you want to include before we log off here, Nick? Uh, did you remember your hot take? Because if not, I got nothing. Oh no, else. I I completely forgot what my hot take was. Oh wait, no. Real quick, before you give your, you said you had a hot take, right? Just now. No, 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 no. I was just waiting for yours, and that oh, I no. said if, if not, I, I got nothing else. No, no, I forgot. But one thing, Nick said he did not want to talk about that list at all. I will say this though, I have to say it. I ha- I have to talk about it because he brought it, like you didn't indirect, you didn't directly bring it up, but you brought up something that like stroke. That, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pops into my head. So I could, I've been, could, I've, I've had some people come at me on Twitter. I don't know what this guy's name was. I don't really respect him now with the way he came at me. I'm going to keep it a buck. So if you happen to see this, I don't respect you. But uh, uh, he came at me over what I said about Russell Westbrook. And I was saying that Russell Westbrook, for me at the time, like it was like last week or two weeks ago, that I had him like in the 10 to 15 range. And he told me that's that's idiotic, blasphemous, you're, you're stupid. He pretty much came at me and tried to call me stupid and everything. And I was arguing it back. So this when this list came out today, Russell Westbrook's at 23, I think it was. So I look at him like, bro... There's no way. Let me go through. Like, there's no way all these guys are ahead of him. And I went through, and I will say, it's it's hard for me to think now going through all those players who exactly I would put him over. So I just want to say that because I did tweet about it earlier today. I already got some replies about it. So if anybody watches this video, I just want to know. Like I under, I've I've hedged back a little bit on how I feel about Russell Westbrook's ranking in the league because I did like looking at people ahead of him. Like I'm not. It's hard for me to make it like a... I think he's in the same tier as them, but it's hard for me like to make a legit, like, hardcore argument that, no, Russell Westbrook's way better... Like, th- he's better than this guy. So, I think I understand now why people hate on... Not hate on Russ, but have Russ ranked lower. But I do think 23 is a little too far. And there is... I did want to say this to you, because you are a Bucks guy. Uh, more of a Bucks guy than I am, obviously. But Chris Middleton at 10. Now, listen... I understand Tread you're a Chris, lightly. Tread I, I was about lightly. to say. I was just about to say. You're, I understand you're a big Chris Middleton guy. I've seen it. Yeah. And I understand the majority of NBA Twitter is a big Chris Middleton guy. Let me just say this, dude. I, I'm a, I, I respect Chris Middleton too. He was great this season. But damn, tenth in the tenth <laughs> best 50, player in the NBA. He's a 50, 40, 90 guy on a team that could have won <laughs> seventy games this year. What 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 else could he have done? What could he have done this I mean, season? That would have made you be like, all right, he deserves 10. Like, 10 is perfect. I love so, it. So, Chris is like, okay, like, I understand he's great. Like, 15 to 20 range, I'm with it. I'm with it. But, so, he's very, like, Paul, he's better than Paul George. Like, come on. like This Paul. year, yeah. This year, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
He's a 50, 40, 90 guy on a team that could have won 70 games. I, I, okay. I, I'm like, cool. I, I, <laughs> we can do this. We've we been, can. we've been we... running a little long. It's been like an hour and a half. All I'm saying, like, you can say, would you say this, right? Let's just end it on a positive note. It's not really related, but let's just end it on a positive note. Is Chris Middleton the closest thing that we have to Clay Thompson in the NBA? Yeah, I, I give you that. I give you that. Perfect. I'm good. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna say here, man, tenth in the like I said it up there, dude. He's he was great this season, no doubt. But tenth, damn, that top ten is some yeah. heavy praise, yeah. dude. Like my God, he was an All Star. He was an All Star. He can be. That's fair. He can be an All Star, but he can be like the lower tier of the All Star. Like damn. My God, but all right, fair enough. I'll give you it. I'll give you. I'll give you. I, I said. I even said it on Twitter. Tenth is a little ins- like a little, little of a stretch to me, but I may be wrong. I said. I said I may be wrong though, so I won't. I won't go too far into it. And I will say this: the people who made the list, Andy Bailey, I think it was, they did say Chris Middleton is this high because we've had so many injuries to other superstars and stars who would be better than him. So I will say that. That he probably would not be top, he would not be tenth if we had like Steph walking around still. Oh so. yeah, no, a hundred percent. No, no questions there. It's because it's a this season thing that I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll accept any disputes. But That's if it true. were like a, if it, if it's like next year and everyone's fine, KD's playing, Kyrie's playing, Steph, Clay. What are we talking about? Put Chris at like fifteen. Right, if he's at ten next year, he better be averaging like thirty-five. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but, I feel but, it. But, but right now, what's the problem? I think it's fine. No, actually, with Nick saying that, I actually will go back with what I was saying. I, I'm fine back with in. it. Take I'm, it back. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I really back. I'm fine with it because you just said something that I use all the time in my core arguments with my friends. I really, my me and my friends get into it all the time. I really like. Sometimes I really hate arguing with them, but just overall, my thing is like. A lot of times, brand names over like over like actual performance, and like I like to do it like from a season on season basis. Like so, like my big thing that I like I, that like people come at me for. I have a lot of people who agree with me, but I also have people come at me for is I've said that Steph Curry was the best player in the NBA from 2016 to like 2018. That's something that I've always said. I'll continue. No, 2015 to 2018. I've always said it, and I believe even when he was healthy, he was better than everybody else. But that's just my belief. But my point is is that I was basing that off of like season. Like I understand people say LeBron took over in the playoffs, but Steph is like the best player in the regular season, both 15 and 16. He was the unanimous MVP. So basically, I'm rambling on. My point is, is that I agree with the whole, like, the, the way you go, like, to rate people based to the season. Because it's not about what you did previous seasons or what you could do in next season or what you could have done if this happened or this, that. It's about results and what you did this season. So I will actually fall back on what I said about Chris Miller. I may still think that 10th is a little generous. I probably would, based on who I saw, I probably on like 13. But I'm not going to get too mad about about the ranking anymore because Nick did bring up something that made me realize I was being a little bit hypocritical with, with saying something about it. So, pat your, uh, next pat on the back, Nick, for getting me to uh, to switch up on everything. So, I think that's all we got today. Nick, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, subscribe to Ku's channel. Oh, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. I, okay, I <laughs> thought you were going to say something about your – you don't want to shout out your Shoot the J podcast or anything? You just did. We're good. Okay, I really you just appreciate did it for that. me. <laughs> no, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I understand you're probably busy, uh, and you got like I know you work a lot, and you, you probably have all kinds of people asking you to come on the show on their shows and stuff. So I really appreciate you making time to come on my show. I really appreciate it. Um, and like I said at the beginning, go follow Nick on Twitter. His handle is right below his picture. Um, make sure you guys go and follow him on there. Like I said, he provides a lot of nice videos, a lot of nice content. Content. Uh, he's starting up uh, that uh, Shoot the J podcast. Make sure you guys go check that out. All that stuff. He's really nice. Follow. Nice guy too. Great guy. So everyone, go follow him. Check him out. Make sure you do that. Um, as far as my channel, make sure you guys, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys give me a thumbs up down below. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. I'm on the road to a thousand subscribers. I'm at like I think 549 right now. So, yeah, I, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I think I can get it by the end of the year. If you guys really need to help me out, though, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below. 
Uh, like I said, I have Russell Westbrook video that you guys can go check out that is relevant to what we talked about on here. And I also talk about like Lonzo Ball, Marco Fultz, which you also brought up, Nick, earlier on in the show. I have one on Marco Fultz, a bunch of players, not just Pistons related. I'm trying to branch on the NBA. So make sure you guys check out my channel if you like it. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And thank you guys for watching another episode of The Ballroom. If there's any guests that you guys want me to go after to have come on the show, let me know in the comment section down below. Again, Nick, thank you for uh, coming on. Make sure you guys go follow him on Twitter. And stay safe, everybody. And Nick, go ahead and end this with the uh, Go Pistons slogan. Go Pistons. There you go.